الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى للرجال نصيب مما ترك الوالدان والأقربون وللنساء نصيب مما ترك الوالدان والأقربون مما قل منه أو كثر نصيبا مفروضا وإذا حضر القسمة أولو القربى واليتامى والمساكين فارزقوهم منه وقولوا لهم قولا معروفا وليخشى الذين لو تركوا من خلفهم ذرية ضعافا خافوا عليهم فليتقوا الله وليقولوا قولا سديدا إن الذين يأكلون أموال اليتامى ظلما إنما يأكلون في بطونهم نارا وسيصلون سعيرا صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد عدد ما ذكره الذاكرون وصل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد عدد ما غفل عن ذكره الغافلون اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد أفضل صلواتك بعدد معلوماتك For men is a share of what the parents and close relatives leave and for women is a share of what the parents and close relatives leave be it little or much an obligatory share And when other relatives and orphans and the needy are present at the time of division, then provide for them something out of the estate and speak to them words of appropriate kindness. And let those fear as if they had left weak offspring behind and feared for them. So let them fear Allah and speak words of appropriate justice. Indeed, those who devour the property of orphans unjustly are only consuming into their bellies fire and they will be burned in a blazing fire. These are the four verses of Surah An-Nisa that we will be covering tonight inshallah. In the previous verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us that the orphans who are in your custody and under your guardianship and your responsibility, you should test them from time to time to find out if they are capable of handling their own finances, finances and their wealth. If, if you determine that they are responsible enough and mature enough to look after their property and look after their wealth, then give their wealth to them. Release to them their wealth and their property and make them responsible for the care of their wealth and their property. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also explained that while the wealth of orphans in, is in your custody and your responsibility if you are needy and you don't have other sources of income to fulfill your needs then you may take from the wealth of orphans as much as is needed not more than that as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَمَنْ كَانَ فَقِيرًا فَلْيَأْكُلْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Allah left it open 
that whoever is needy, let him take from the wealth of orphan what is appropriate, what is reasonable. Now, the, the word reasonable is coming from the Arabic word ma'roof, is left open. So, for example, the reasonable in America may be few hundred dollars that the guardian is spending on the orphan or looking after the orphan or looking after the wealth or other kind of expenses that are that are incurring as a result of that guardianship so in america the the cost of looking after maybe a few hundred dollars or the need of this guardian the caretaker would be a few hundred dollars a month versus a few hundred rupees or a few hundred riyal or a few hundred dirham in other countries so you cannot take the highest value or you cannot take into consideration the cost of living or the cost or the the cost of your needs in comparison of another place another country let's say for example you live in a village where the cost of living is minimum and that would be reasonable if you are needy and you need that much uh, sustenance from the wealth of the property that would be reasonable to take that much from the wealth but instead you say oh the cost of living in the city is that much so i will take that much that will not be reasonable so you will be eating the wealth of an orphan unjustly and you are basically putting fire in your stomach as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the quran so that was explained earlier one of the things that was missed in our previous session was that the ulama have mentioned that the the guardian or the caretaker also has the permission to use the wealth of the orphan for the benefit of the orphan so he may invest it somewhere and whatever the benefit that he receives he may uh, he can add that into the principal into the wealth of the orphan that is according to some ulama now comes ayah number seven of surah Ali, surah al nisa in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لِلْرِجَالِ نَصْغِيبٌ مِمَّا تَرَكَ الْوَالِدَانِ وَالْأَقْرَبُونَ for men there is a share in that which is left by the parents walidan the word walidan is used walidan includes walid and walida walid means father and walida means mother so sometimes both may be leaving at the same time so the parents walid and walida mother and father sometimes it will be one of them it's either father who left or the mother who left so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used both words that for men there is a share in that which is left by the parents and the close relatives the close relatives whatever they leave behind when they die what is called uh, inheritance or what is called the heritage whatever they are leaving behind in that there is a share there's a reserved share for the men. <clears throat> and for women, there is a share in that which is left by the parents and which is left by the close relatives. Before Islam and even after Islam, it is a tragedy in all human societies that men have always oppressed two people when it comes to in 